GWO standards are created by the industry for the industry. Our members are globally leading turbine manufacturers and owners representing a majority of installed wind energy capacity around the world. Together, they share risk information and expertise to create training standards that improve safety and build a competent workforce. This video covers how training providers can find guidance and inspiration to plan learning activities that align with the learning objective levels used in the GWO training standards. This video includes short self-test quizzes to help reflection along the way. Learning objectives are at the core of the GWO training standards. Put simply, learning objectives precisely describe what participants should be able to do after their training. The GWO taxonomy applies learning objectives at three different taxonomic levels of increasing complexity, the basic level, an intermediate level, and the advanced level. Furthermore, the taxonomy divides learning into three key domains, knowledge, skills, and ability. As a rule, the more advanced the learning objective is, the more engaging and involving the learning activities must be in order to challenge participants and create the expected learning experience. However, irrespective of taxonomic level, every learning objective calls for specific learning activities that engage the participants when they actually practice what the learning objective demands. As an example of this coherence between learning objectives and activities, let's look at a learning objective taken from the BST Sea Survival Standard. This states, the participants can take responsibility for conducting safe transfer between vessel and wind turbine generator applying lanyards and connectors. This is an intermediate level ability. In this case, we can tell that safe transfer between vessel and wind turbine is what the participants must practice during training. And by observing participants practicing and learning what they are supposed to be able to do, their abilities and progression can be assessed in every detail. In this example, the close alignment between learning objectives, learning activities, and the assessment of progression and learning is ensured. Let's take a brief step back and have a look at how people actually learn by considering David Kolb's experiential learning cycle. Kolb's model illustrates how we learn from our experiences. In other words, we learn while we were actually doing something, and afterwards we think about what we did, how it worked, and how our performance may be improved. It is only by going through this whole cycle that our actions become a learning experience. Taking our earlier safe transfer example, we can apply Kolb's learning cycle and break down a training exercise into the four stages. First, in stage one, you step onto the ladder from the vessel, attach your twin fall arrest lanyards and start climbing towards the top. In stage two, you reach the top of the boat landing safely. It worked. Then, in stage three, you think about what went well and what was challenging. Was it just as you had imagined or could you have done anything in a better way? Finally, in stage four, you draw a conclusion on what was good, what should be changed, and you decide how you will perform the next transfer even more safely. In other words, you have created an experience. You have learned something. And at the same time as you are practicing doing this, you can be observed and your development and your level of ability can be evaluated. So how does the GWO taxonomy support this way of planning and training? Let's take a look at the taxonomy document and think about it in terms of a single learning objective taken from the GWO Slinger Signaler Training Standard. This states, 
the participant can describe the purpose and relevance of a lifting risk assessment. This is from the knowledge learning domain, basic level. We now find the section on knowledge at the basic level and see that describe is an action verb on the same level as to name and to recognize. We can also see the section contains examples on how these action verbs are applied in different learning objectives at this level. Knowledge at the basic level is described as the participants are able to apply their knowledge to familiar work situations or to simply describe or refer to the actual topic. With this learning objective in mind, we will take a look at how I can go about designing a classroom learning activity aimed at knowledge on the basic level. First, I present the main principles of a risk assessment for lifting operations, and then I ask each participant to fill in the questionnaire I have made on risk assessments. When they are done, I present the correct answers on the screen or using a flip chart so the participants can check out their own responses. Finally, I ask some of the participants about their learning and challenges in relation to risks and risk assessments. This is a level of activity common for developing knowledge on the basic level, and it can be conducted both digitally and in a traditional classroom scenario. Looking at this example again, in terms of Kolb's learning cycle, we can easily identify the four stages. First, stage one. After my short presentation, the participants test their understanding of my presentation together with their own experiences of risk assessments using the questionnaire. Then, in stage two, by comparing their own answers with the correct answers on screen, participants find out whether they were right or whether their understanding must be adjusted. At stage three, maybe participants will reflect on their success without me prompting them. However, those participants that I ask to share experiences will, for sure, review their results and their understanding. Stage four, later on in the training session, in this case, when we work on the lifting plan, the participants will draw on their earlier risk assessment learning and decide how to apply their knowledge on risk assessments to the lifting plan. In this way, the cycle is complete. Now it's time for a recap on what we've covered. We have used the following five important terms. Taxonomy, a way of describing that there are different levels of learning. Some may be quite easy to reach and some are more complicated to understand or perform. Learning objective. This describes what the participants must be able to do after the training. Learning activity. What the participants must do in order to learn and reach the learning objective facilitated by the instructor. Experience. We learn from experience and we create experiences when we reflect on and think about what just happened or what we just did and how it worked. Action verbs. These are the core of all learning objectives. They describe what the participants can do after the training and they indicate the taxonomic level of learning. Let's pull all this together in terms we should now be becoming familiar with. The learning objective of this video is that the participant or viewer afterwards can recognize the common terms used in the GWO taxonomy and can describe where to seek guidance when planning learning activities for a GWO learning objective. The learning activity conducted has been the video gives short presentations or instructions, followed by the participant completing simple quizzes or questionnaires on screen during the video. The learning outcome is assessed by yourself by doing the quiz and questions during the video. Thank you for watching the GWO taxonomy video. Do not hesitate to reach out to clarify any challenging topics 
or find the GWO taxonomy framework in the GWO training providers requirements. They can be found on our website, www.globalwindsafety.org.